sure your mobile phone will give you the time, but not nearly as conveniently or fashionably as a wristwatch does. Watches come in a variety of materials, often combined with stainless steel. But one of the more creative pairings is stainless steel with wood. This company makes wristwatches which feature exotic hardwood accents. This particular model is a limited edition series designed for New York Yankees baseball fans. The blue painted maple comes from wooden seats salvaged from the original Yankee Stadium which opened in 1923. At the watch factory, a worker first cuts a strip of wood just over a third of an inch thick, then cuts it into blocks measuring around three-fourths of an inch by a third of an inch each. Manufacturers will ultimately use these blocks to make the wood inlays in the links of the watch bracelet. The worker then cuts another strip from a piece of wood, this one nearly a quarter of an inch thick. The worker then cuts this strip into nearly two by two inch squares. Each one will become a ring called a bezel that goes around the watch dial. Another worker mounts one square at a time on a lathe and bores a hole through the middle. She mounts several board squares onto a steel mandrel that attaches to the lathe, along with a bezel template. As the lathe turns, a steel roughing gouge rounds the squares to the diameter of the template. She takes one bezel at a time and cuts it to the required thickness, about a tenth of an inch. She then shaves wood from the underside so as not to remove the historic blue paint on top. To make the watch case which houses the dial and movement, the manufacturers cut a blank piece of extruded stainless steel, then place it in a computer-guided machine. Under a continuous shower of lubricant, the machine's 12 different tools take turns shaping the piece into a watch case. The first tools bore a hole in the middle for the movement and carve a groove around the hole for the wood bezel. The next tools cut the outside profile of the case and the lugs for attaching the watch band. Then the final tool drills holes in the lugs for the spring-loaded pins that attach the watch band to the case. Another computer-guided machine makes the watch band and links out of a bar of stainless steel. This machine reduces the bar in width, carves out the links, and bores holes for the connecting pins. A process called ion plating puts a black finish on all the stainless steel parts. Then a worker assembles two bands and connects one to the watch clasp. Next, he attaches the watch case window. It's made of sapphire glass, a crystal that's exceptionally durable. He inserts the self-winding movement and dial. The dial is a sheet of brass with cutout numbers and indices over a base. Coated in luminescent paint, the watch glows in the dark. He secures the movement to the case with a retaining ring, then inserts the crown, which sets the dial's hands. The worker screws on the stainless steel case back. The watch's window of sapphire glass allows you to see the working movement inside. The case back is engraved with the name of the limited edition collection and this watch's number in the series. He attaches the watch band to the case with spring pins. With the watch now fully assembled, it's time to inlay the Yankee Stadium wooden chair accents. Using a toothpick, a worker applies epoxy glue to the rectangular recess in each link. Then he places a wooden link piece in each recess. He follows the same process for the dial's wooden bezel. A worker sets the watch aside for 24 hours to let the adhesive set. Then, the worker buffs the entire surface on a cloth polishing wheel. This process removes the fingerprints and dust and smooths those historic wood accents. The watch automatically winds with wrist movement to reliably tell the time. 
while nostalgically going back in time. Before the invention of electricity, criminal acts were hidden by darkness. Police officers carried special lanterns as they pursued suspects. Today, craftsmen replicate these lanterns for the movie and television industries. These props are authentically replicated pieces of police history. With a thick bullseye lens to magnify the light from the flame, the 19th century police lantern helped find bad guys on shadowy streets. To replicate a vintage police lantern, the craftsman starts with a piece of steel. Using a scribe, he traces around a pattern to transfer the outline to the blank. He marks notches for hinges and for the latch and etches the shape of the lens hole in the center. He draws two diagonal lines in the lens hole area. The point where the lines intersect determines the exact center. He punches a divot into the steel at this cross point. He scribes lines along the edges for bending into a reinforced border later on. He cuts out the hinge and latch notches, following the transferred pattern lines. Next, he aligns the center divot with a punch and then activates the punch to cut out the hole for the lantern lens. The craftsman now bends wire to match the profile of the lantern door. He aligns the wire with the scribed lines on the edge of the door and folds the metal over it. Bending the door to the correct curvature completes the part. Following another pattern, the craftsman marks the location for vent holes in the blank that will become the lantern's main structure. He cuts out the vent holes where he's made the marks using a hand-operated punch. He then rolls the blank into a cylinder. It takes a couple of passes to achieve the correct curvature. Moving on to the lantern's lens holder, the craftsman crimps a bead around one end. This bead helps to retain the bullseye lens in the holder. Returning to the lantern body, he hammers the top rim around the cap. He preps the surface for soldering with a chemical cleaning agent known as flux. He then solders the joint to secure the top to the lantern. He also solders a raised panel to the back. This substantial panel serves as support for handles. He then cleans the solder joints with acetone. Next, he wraps metal hinges around the wire that runs through the notches in the door. He crimps the hinges together at the ends and positions the door on the lantern body. He adjusts the hinges so the ends sit level on the lantern. He solders the hinges to the steel structure. The craftsman inserts the bullseye lens assembly into the hole in the center of the lantern door, and he solders the joint. He pins and solders the two tiers of a copper chimney. He places the chimney over the hole in the top of the lantern and tucks more pins into holes in the chimney. The craftsman installs a decorative part in the top, one that won't obstruct the chimney hole. He assembles the handles to the raised panel at the back of the lantern. Once the soldered seam hardens, he files it down. The craftsman tests the latch on the door and confirms that it operates perfectly. After taping up the lens and handles, he spray paints the lantern black. <laughs> 